Hey, what's up you guys? Jack Jack here. So how's everyone been? I've actually been enjoying the weather. I've been out doing a lot of things outside, you know, skateboarding. I like skateboarding. Haven't been playing Fortnite in a while, actually. Well, hopefully everyone's doing good. I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a background change button using the conditional button. If you're newer, just remember you can pause the video at any time, rewind the video. All right, so I don't want this video to be too long. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you guys smash the like button. Subscribe if you guys are new. So this is a BHE 1v1 map that I've, you know, made a tutorial on that is obviously in the description if you want to take a look at that if you're new let's get right into the button what we got to do is go to my island go to creative devices we are going to select the conditional button with the conditional button place it on your map wherever you like i did have a on and off button tutorial on my channel if you do have that one you can remove it and place this new one obviously this one would probably be better because you got more options more background options instead of just the on and off button with this device here are the options we got interaction text i have a set the change button this will actually be the message that pops up once you hover over the button the last option that we have to change is at the very bottom when activated transmit on we'll set this to a channel we haven't used on our map yet on this map i haven't used channel 130 yet so i'll set it to 230. And there is your change background button. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, guys. Peace. You actually thought I was serious, huh? Yeah, well, we're, we're not done yet. We got <laughs> There's a lot more things to do. All right, so we got to place our options, our background options, and then we got to set up our mechanics in order for this button to work. So depending on what game mode you made, you know, it could be whatever. I don't know what type of game modes you guys are making, but if it's a 1v1 map, you just go to your background device. And I have this background device here. What you can do is just remove it. Memorize the options on it if you'd like, and then, oh shoot, what, why is there a big hole here? Go to devices, we are gonna select the barrier device. There is a barrier plate device, and then there is a barrier device. Don't use this, use the barrier device. With the barrier device, we're gonna go into the settings. You can have whatever you want on it. You can set up your settings however you like, but there are important options on this device that you've gotta make sure are changed. Enable during phase, make sure that sets a none zone shape. Make sure that set the box hollow. This is actually very important. Don't mess that up. Box hollow, you guys. Box hollow. Enable when receiving from, we'll set this to 231. Disable when receiving from, we'll set this to 241. All the other options, you can set it to however you like. So for example, barrier style, I'm going to set this to nebula purple. And then I'm going to increase the size of the barrier for my map. So I have my first barrier option here. We're gonna copy it and place another one just above it, like so. Go into the options. This will actually get pretty complicated here, so make sure you pause the video if you need to. If it gets too complicated, just pause the video. Make sure everything is done correctly. Option will change is enable when received from. We'll bump this up by one, 232. The save one received from will be 242. So both these options, I just bumped it up, added one point to both these options. Another option, bearer style, you can set it up to however you like. This is just a bearer style that you can change. I'm gonna set this one to Nebula. I'm gonna copy that barrier, make a third one. Do the same thing, bearer style, I'm gonna change the option. I'm gonna set this one to Star Field. Enable one received from, bump it up by one. Now it's 233. Save one received from 242. Now it is 243. I'm going to copy it one more time and make four barriers in this tutorial. I'm going to set up star field blue. Actually, I'll set it to invisible. Enable one received from 234. Disable one received from 244. Once again, you guys, this is kind of like advanced tutorials. So if you need to just pause the video, I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. I don't think you guys want to have a 30 minute video to watch in order to do this. But of course, pause the video if you need to. So it's really messy right here. But if I go underneath the barriers, you can actually see that there are four barriers. There you go, four barriers. Now, if you want more barriers on your map, more options for your button, you can duplicate more barriers and then change the options that we've changed. But then it might get really complicated because then you have to understand how to set up the mechanics in order for this button to work. And yeah, again, we're not done yet. So there's, there's a lot more things to know. But I think for myself, I think four barriers is good enough. 
Okay, next, we are gonna go away from our arena. We're gonna go away from all of that uh, craziness. There's <laughs> the glitching going on here. Away from my arena and also away from where people would actually be in the game mode. Two devices, we are gonna select the sequencer. Sequencer, sequencer. And we're gonna place down a floor, then we're gonna place down the trap or the sequencer, like so. Here are the options, height, 0.5. Start when we're seeing from, we're gonna set this to 30, which is also our conditional button. Once we activate the conditional button, this will actually get activated. So it'll look like this. Next, two devices, trigger. Place it down, go into the options. Triggered player, off. Triggered vehicle, off. Delay, we're gonna set this to one second delay. This is actually pretty important for this mechanic in order for this to work. Next option, one trigger transmit on. We'll set this to 231, which is our first barrier option. Enable one received from, we'll set this to 234. Disable one received from, 231. All right, so with this trigger, we're gonna place it in our sequencer in the first row. We can copy that trigger, place another one on the second row. Here are the options that we need to change. Enabled on game start. We'll actually set this to disabled. Tabs at the top. We're going to go to modified options. This will save a lot of time. Enabled when received from. We're going to set this to 231. Disabled when received from. We're going to set this to 232. One trigger transmit on. We'll set this to 232. Copy that trigger, place another one on the other row. Here are the options. What we gotta actually do now, which is a lot easier. All we need to do is be on modified options and add one point to all three of these options. Enable one received from, now it'll be 232. Disable one received from, 233. When triggered, transmit on, this will be 233. Copy that trigger, place another one. Do the exact same thing. These three options add one point to it 233 disable one received from 234 one trigger transmit on 234 pretty easy right okay so what i'm gonna actually do i'm gonna get the conditional button so you don't need the conditional button but uh, i'm just gonna place here just to show you guys how this mechanic works the button gets activated it'll actually activate the sequencer sequencer goes off and then activates our first trigger our first trigger is connected with our first barrier and the first barrier will be enabled. Once the first barrier gets activated, it will actually allow once the button gets activated again, the next barrier gets activated and the next trigger is connected with our second barrier, then so on. So third barrier, then fourth barrier. Now what's missing? We're actually missing a mechanic in order to disable the barriers that aren't supposed to be enabled. So let's set that up now. We're gonna copy our first trigger in the options, we'll turn off enable when received from and also disable when received from. No channel, then no channel. And then trigger when received from, we'll add this to 231. One trigger transmit on, we'll actually set this to 244. Another thing we'll do, we'll actually remove the delay and set it to none. From there, we're gonna copy this trigger and place another one on the other side. Options will change is trigger one received from and one trigger transmit on. Trigger one received from, 232. One trigger transmit on, this will be 241. Copy that trigger, place another one. Rinse and repeat, do the same thing. Trigger one received from, 233. Added one point to it, one trigger transmit on. 242. Copy the trigger, place our last trigger that we need. Trigger one received from 234. One trigger transmit on 243. Confirm. Last thing, I actually almost forgot something. Here is the conditional button. What we gotta do is make sure we drop the wood into this device. So go to consumables and then equip wood. Go to play and then you can drop one wood into the conditional button. 
sometimes it takes some time in order for your conditional button to actually take the item there you go perfect all right so there is our mechanics in order for us to have a change background button here is a quick option if you want on default right now if i do start the game i can actually show you what's gonna happen what you'll actually notice is the barrier isn't enabled there's no barrier at all you got your conditional button here you click on it and then a barrier gets enabled now say you want to start with a barrier when the game starts instead of you know no barrier at all what you need to do is pretty simple just go back to your mechanics go to your first trigger that we place in our sequencer this one right here in all options we're gonna find activate on game phase so it should be set to none we're gonna set it to game start so once the match starts this trigger will activate automatically all right from there start your match once the game starts you should have your background already enabled your first background that you have set and then you can click on your change background button to change the background and there you go guys that is how to build a basic background change button on fortnite creative what i'm noticing on my map right now is the fact that my first beer is actually underneath the floor as you can see now i don't want that for this map so what i can do is just raise the barriers you can barely see it but right here this first barrier it is and it's kind of underneath the ground so i'm gonna copy it and i'm just gonna raise the barriers above the ground like so that should solve my issue my visible barrier and we go back to other styles all right guys if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you guys smash the like button if you guys enjoy this type of content subscribe for more use code jack jack hc in the item shop if you guys want to see more videos like this helps me out supports the channel once again if you want to add more you know styles background options you're gonna have to learn the mechanics and understand it to a point where you can add more to it but obviously that is up to you if you got your background change button working, let me know down below in the comments. Also, if you guys have any other suggestions on what type of tutorials you guys want to see on my channel, make sure you guys let me know down below in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, guys. Peace.